people ask me what it was like getting COVID. There's the normal physical uh, symptoms that you receive, but I think the biggest, uh, the most impacting was the spiritual side of it, which was isolation. My life is totally different because of coronavirus now. A lot of work I've lost that I would have had originally that I don't. Um, plans that uh, my wife and I had made that we can't go through with anymore. I feel confused about what God is doing in our church and in my job. These blessings that seemed so consistent um, that are now shifting into this unknown. Growing up, my parents would always tell me to throw a party when something went wrong in our lives. And having a pastor as a father, it seemed like things always went wrong. And he would always remind me to count it all joy, Abby. And when you encounter various trials, and that has been so hard these past few weeks. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. The talk about COVID is one thing, but to experience it for ourselves is another. It's another sort of fear. I thought to myself, what if um, I don't make it? You know, what if uh, no one's promised tomorrow? So uh, it really, I really had a self-examining moment as Paul tells the Corinthians to examine ourselves. And I thought, am I making it count? For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. We were finally able to gather back with our church family. Words can't express the feeling the joy of being able to just gather with our family, our church family, and worship together, and just again be reminded of God's goodness and His grace and His mercy. And as much as we've changed or our circumstances have changed, God hasn't, and His plan for us hasn't, and His plan for the world hasn't. Everything's still on course, man. It's still like, like what's supposed to happen is still gonna happen. And God's church is gonna be built and it won't be stopped. Hell, our sin, our own mistakes, our own wasted time, can't stop it, can't end it. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Our God is steadfast even when we are not, and He will sustain us to the very end. And through all of this, I have become more and more sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything in all of creation can separate us from the love of God. Just a few verses later it says, every good and perfect gift is from above. And one of those gifts to which he's referring is suffering. So I just want to remind all of you what my dad would remind me, which is to count it all joy when you encounter trials because God is using them to grow you. So be thankful for the growth that you see in your life and don't fight it, just embrace it. See, God is preparing us for an eternity in His glorious presence where we will worship Him with perfected clarity because of the work that He has done in us.